This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models for free. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting updates coming from the folks at Luxion as Keyshot 11 is now here. Now Keyshot 11 comes with a couple of nice improvements that includes lots of stuff for animation, skin tones and also some enhancements for those who like to bring in different file formats. Now this is a brand new step in a wonderful direction owing to the fact that the folks at Keyshot have said it and they have lived up to it and we're also seeing something a little bit interesting that deals with you being able to now texture directly in Keyshot. Shot. So what we're going to do today is take a look at some of these tools, see how they perform and also give a simple feedback of what and what that needs to be improved and of course the kind of things that you would be expecting if you choose to get Keyshot right now. And for those who like to try Keyshot, you can simply go over to the link in the description where you can try Keyshot for free and you can make that decision once you're done. Now with that said, let's dive over and take a look at what Keyshot 11 actually looks like. Alright, so with Keyshot 11 open right here, what you would notice is the UI looks very similar to what you have with the previous one. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new improvements that you can play with as we switch this from the startup to the default workspace. So one of the nice things that I think the folks at Luxion have built based off is dynamics. So in the previous version of Keyshot, of course, we did have that snap to ground sort of thing. So in this case, if you have an object like this, you can go ahead and snap this to the ground. Or if you have multiple objects, in this case, if I go in and get a cube and drop that cube there, let's scale this cube all the way up. Let's scale this up, up, up all the way. Nice. So if we have it and we select the sphere and click on the move tool to get that sphere, we can choose to snap to the lower object, which automatically snaps to the lower object, or we can choose to snap to ground. So this was nice. Now they've built based off that to give us dynamics. So in this case, if you go in and click on settle, you would notice that automatically it calculates what's going on within your scene. And then with the object selected, there is going to be a dynamics or should I say a physics simulation that just automatically happens. And this one works with rigid body. So it's not like uh, something that works with cloth for now. So it's just something that just helps you position stuff or just drop things depending on what you want to create. Now, this feature is going to be very useful for those who like to scatter stuff. And what do I mean? If you have an object like this selected, you can right click and instead of duplicating one after the other, you can make patterns. And if we click here to make pattern, go over to the section, set this as circular because, you know, I like to make it circular. Let's increase the number of counts and there you have it. We can also play with the radius if this is what we want. And in this case, I would like to also scatter this a little bit more. So I'm just going to play with the scatter to get something like that. Once I'm okay with the result I want, click on okay. And then click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the last one, click on the move tool, and then, you know, you hit the settle button and automatically you can start noticing that you have that physics simulation going on. And when we speak about the physics dynamics that now exist in Keyshot 11, it is worth knowing that there is also a tool set that is available for this. And to access that, you need to go over to tools, go all the way down to where you would find the physics simulation. So if we click on the physics simulation right now, we can play with all of the settings that exist. And the beautiful thing is in case you're thinking about recording these simulations, you can choose to record these things with this particular window, which is something you would not be able to get within the animation timeline. So let's start off with the very first one, which is the sphere. And I'm just gonna go ahead and check this, make sure I have that turned on. Else you would not be able to have the start or the begin simulation thing. Let's stretch this all the way out. And uh, let's also stretch this one a little bit so we can get some more stuff. All right. So with this in here, what you can do is you can play with the bounciness. You can play with the simulation time. So in case we would like to get some more simulation time, we can crank that up. And if we hit the playback button, this is going to animate and we're going to have a keyframe right here. So to do that, simply click on begin simulation. You will see that we have the simulation going on. And once we stop it, you would notice that automatically it gives us a keyframe. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see that we have this within the timeline. So you no longer need to re-simulate this over and over again. Now, this makes sense because at this time, if you would like to also do the very same thing for all the other objects, you can. So you can turn on all these other objects. So let's just go in and turn on all of them. And once you have them ready and you like to play with the bounciness or maybe the way gravity affects all of this, you can choose to do this. Hit the begin simulation and let all of them, you know, start. And the first things you would notice is we have some more bounciness on those objects, contrary to what we had previously. 
So once we're ready, we can go ahead and hit the stop simulation button. And we're also going to get the simulation for these other ones, or should I say the keyframes for these other ones. So if we press the playback, you can see we have different keyframes. You would also notice that because we allow the first one play a little bit longer, we have more keyframes for that. So you can bring this down, you can extend that depending on what you want. And with that said, let's take a look at what would happen if we choose to simulate the last one and crank out or crank in the bounciness. Uh, let's increase the simulation and every other thing looks cool. Let that be, send this all the way back and now press begin simulation. So this is going to have more bounciness owing to the fact that we crank the bounciness all the way up. And this just gives you access to the simulation parameters. So just in case you like to tweak these parameters however you want, you can take advantage of this. So with all of the keyframes here, if you would like to reduce them, you can. So you can just pick up the playhead and drag this all the way down. And uh, that is just one good way of doing that. Or you can select the keyframes individually and you can see all of this and you can choose to tweak these frames depending on what you want. And speaking about things that works pretty nice that I like is the fact that the folks at Luzion have now incorporated the texture painting. So I did make an announcement sometime, you know, with the tease that probably texture painting will be coming over to Keyshot. And yes, it is here. So to take a look at how this texture painting works, we would go ahead and grab a sculpt from a wonderful artist known as Nos, and he has made the Lovecraft turn. And the Lovecraft turn is a Sculpt January Day 14 stuff. So in case you'd like to get this, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can grab it. All right, so with the model here, how we can texture paint now is pretty simple. So the get started with the texture painting, make sure you have a material assigned to the model. So in this case, we just have a very basic material that it came with assigned to the model. Then the next thing which we're going to do is go over to the material graph. So click on this button, go over to the material graph, which actually pops up like so. And then the next thing you need to do is to right click, go all the way down to where you have texture and you notice that you have the 3D paint. So with the 3D paint, you can now paint textures directly on your model right here in Keyshot. So how can you do that? For you to do that, you need to go in and select this node, which is the out node and connect it to the color. And since we're working with a diffuse material, we can now paint just for the diffuse. If you like to paint for your bumps, you can do that. If you also like to paint for your opacity, you can of course go ahead and do it. So to paint is super simple. All you need to do is double click on this object and then you can click on the word paint and start painting. Now, once I paint, you would notice that, you know, it paints the color there. And if you like to change the color, you can always change the color from here. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that color. Let's drag this all the way down or out. And let's also stretch this one right there. So in this case, we can paint some more. We can switch this to that. And we can, of course, go in and make some painting. But what if you like to paint based of a given texture? So to use textures to paint, you would notice that within the brush color, we have a texture slot. So to add a texture right here, we can either go over to where we have our textures, which are like the pre-built textures that comes with Keyshot, and we can select any of the textures that we want. In this case, select this, drag and drop it right there. And if we choose to start painting, we'll be painting based of this texture. It is also worth knowing that instead of using this to paint, there is also additional tools that includes stamping and also the eraser. So if you like to stamp, you can just simply select the stamp tool and click on the part which you like to stamp the texture on, and then you can stamp that. And for those who like to change the brush shape, of course you can. So in this case, before we do that, let's just go in and take this out and you can put in an alpha that would serve as the texture. So since we already have some of those things here, Let's go in and grab some alphas. I uh, will just click, drag and drop that right in there. And with that ready, the next thing which we need to do is we'll go in and start texturing this base of the alpha. And of course, if you're not comfortable with the idea that this is having the interactive preview rendering while you're texturing, you can click on the performance button. And from here, you can make some changes. So I can go in, make some changes like so, and if you hold down the Alt key with your left mouse button, you can orbit around it. So I can go ahead and do stuff like that. And you can change and play with as many, many brush shapes that you want. So I can add on that brush shape and use that brush shape right here. And you can do as many things as you want now. You can now easily texture your models directly here in Keyshot. Now, is this going to be for everybody? I don't think so. I just think that, you know, for those who like to use one tool to get their product done from beginning to end, this is going to come in very handy. And also it might come in handy 
if you already have some textures loaded onto your model and probably you just want to add some decals, some extra details, and you don't really want to do the entire texturing workflow. So this brand new update actually brings that quality of life improvement to KeyShop. And it is also worth knowing that this isn't the only thing that you can now do in terms of texturing. Now, for those who are also thinking about playing with layers, you can go ahead and explore the layer feature. So in this case, you can add an extra layer and you can detail this layer how you want. So we can call this a base. And we can also go over and change the color. So let's just go in, change the color of this one right here to something like that. And if we go all the way down to the layer, we can turn this off and we can turn it back on. So it has a sort of non-destructive workflow where if you're not comfortable with what you want, you can just go ahead and take this out and you still have the mesh exactly the way you want it. So for those who have been thinking about texturing in KeyShot, this is it and you can explore with it. There's also more things to explore. You can also explore with the geometry nodes that already exist. And this is just one of those nice things that I don't see a whole lot of people work with in Keisha. Now, with that said, let's go in and talk about some extra new shaders that are now available. So in most cases, when you're working with Keisha, you might want to explore setting skin tones. And that wasn't something that was easily accessible in previous versions of Keisha. This new version of Keisha introduces way more skin tones. So in this case, if we go ahead and take a look at the model like so, and we choose to load in the human skin, there is just a whole lot of skin tones now that you can explore and work with. And I think they did a perfect job of working on the subsurface scattering because it looks even way cleaner. Let's set this to GPU and then set this to the noise so that we can get this happening really quick. So I can go ahead and click and drag and drop that. And you can see looking pretty clean, updates is extremely, extremely nice. And you can explore as much skin tones as you want. So it has basically the most skin tones that you'll be needing for your characters. So you don't necessarily need to spend so much time deciding on how to get the exact shader right now, as this is now something that is quite available. One of the nice new improvements that is also available in KeyShot is FBX animation import. So in this case, if you'd like to bring in your FBX animations into KeyShot, all you need to do is simply drag and drop this in here, or you can go over to file, import FBX animation, select the animation file. Instead of having these as specific frames, you can set this to entire animation. So once you have it this way, you can click on import and automatically you'll be able to get the animation right here in Keyshot. So in this case, if we go ahead and press the playback button, you can see that we have our animation of the running character right in here. So this is pretty impressive and nice for those who've been wondering and wishing to get FBX animation. And I'm one of those people that have always, always wanted to get this. And it's quite interesting to see. It also makes sense to note that Regardless of this, you can bring in as many things as possible. And another thing which I sort of found out is some things probably don't work certain times. So what I mean by that is if we go over to the geometry and we choose to bring in, for example, a sphere. And right now, if we would like to do some physics animation thing happening, because this isn't running as a motion, you would not be able to have this animation playback. And that is one thing. So I would strongly suggest if you're bringing in FBX animation into KeyShop, it should be like the final thing that you should bring in. Else, I would suggest that you go with a good old fashioned Alembic file where you can just convert your object to Alembic and import them directly into KeyShop. Speaking about important stuff, USDZ is now supported and Regardless of the fact that this is supported, the folks at Luxion have also added a very brilliant update to this release. And that update deals with your environment being able to be animated. So in most cases, if you're doing things like product visualization, you would like to have the environment sort of rotate in a kind of way. Instead of playing with the light and animating the lights themselves, you can now do that. So how you can do that is pretty simple. Go over to the animation section, click on the animation wizard, and then select either of this environment. So if you like to have the environment brightness being animated, you like to animate the sun and sky or the environment rotation, you can do all of this. So if we select the sun and sky, for example, you can see what we have. So you get the sun and the sky sort of animating. And that is pretty nice. In this case, we don't have a sun and sky environment. So we're just going to click on add to add that in. Then we can go over next and we can set how we would like this movement to be. Play with it however you want it to be from here. And once you're done, you can click on the word finish. Now, once you press the playback button, you can now see that your sun and sky animates and this is going to be very very useful for architectural visualization artists that would like to use keyshop to get that sweet 
some movement in the scene. It's also worth knowing that you can also play with the environment brightness, which I don't really see why, you know, lots of people would want to do this since you can easily do a fade off and a fade in in your video sequence editor. But either ways, this is also a new update that is now available for Keyshot users and you can go in and start exploring with it. And that's about it. For those who like to test out Keyshot 11, you can simply go over to the try section where you can try Keyshot for I think 14 days and you will be able to take advantage of some of the latest and cool features that now exist for Keyshot. It's also worth knowing that the cutaway material in GPU mode is now supported. Previously, this wasn't something that you could get in GPU mode, but right now it is something that you can now work with. So for those who like to test this out, you want to play with it, you want to try it, you want to try it, link is going to be in the description where you can check it out. And before we go, let's give a shout out to our sponsor Sketchfab. So Sketchfab, like we've always mentioned, is a beautiful place on the internet where you can download high quality 3D models. So all of the models that we tested out today were coming from Sketchfab, except for the animation one that came directly from Mixamo. So for you to get free Sketchfab models, you need to go over to explore, go all the way to downloadables, where you can download high quality 3D models totally for free. And the beautiful thing about Sketchfab is you can preview your models or beat around them before you hit the download button or even before you make a purchase. And for those who like to take a look at Sketchfab, you want to download models from here and test them out with Keyshot. Links to this is also going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.